Well, sir, what's your name? Gino. Gino. So my question is with regarding the recent Target thing where if you feel gender is opposite mm -hmm. of what you really are, you can go into the bathroom. And what my question is oh, about geez, is... Oh, here we go. You, you just <laughs> asked that question about gender and about bathrooms to Frank Turek. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> and to you guys you as well. You open your PowerPoint? Two North Carolinians up here. <laughs> Anyways... So anyways, what I'm, my question is like, if I don't know someone who's dealing with this, but if I ever was to know, meet someone who was dealing with, I'm a, like, let's say they're a guy and they say, you know, I feel like a girl. How, what, what can I talk to them about? Like, how can I, do I use like a combo tactic or should I send an email to them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just have a quick question. This email you're thinking about sending, is this at your place of occupation? <laughs> Don't send it. Well, I think, I think that um, there's a video going around on the internet now by the Washington Family Policy Council. I don't know if you happen to see it, but it actually is a video where a guy goes to the University of Washington and starts asking people, um, is it okay for anybody to use any bathroom? They all say, oh, yeah, 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 it is. And uh, the guy says, he's a five foot nine white guy. He says, uh, uh, suppose I were to tell you I'm a woman, and most of the students say, well, that's fine, that's fine with me. Suppose I were to say that I was a Chinese woman, mm -hmm. and then they, they get a little bit more questioning. And suppose I would say I was a 6'5 Chinese woman. Then they suddenly get real resistant. Well, you're really not 6'5. Why? Because of outer appearance. Well, if they were to take his clothes off, yeah, don't go there. If, <laughs> True. They would see by physical appearance he's really a man and not a woman, right? That's yeah. right. Now, we have to have the utmost compassion for people that deal with this issue. But according to Dr. Paul McHugh, who is uh, one of the directors of psychiatry or worked in uh, John Hopkins University for many years as a, psych uh, psych uh, easy for me to say, as a psychiatrist, and that institution did so-called sex change operations, they stopped doing those sex change operations because they realized that the result was worse, the cure was worse than the disease. And he points out that this idea that you're different from your biological sex is a psychological disorder. It would be like anorexia. If I'm 89 pounds and I think I'm fat, that's a psychological disorder. The physical right. truth is I'm 89 pounds and I should be a lot more. My mental state is I'm overweight. That's a psychological condition. Now, people get all insulted when you suggest you have a psychological condition. Right. However, why do we do that? Why is it that if you say I have a bad heart, there's no shame in that, but if I have a bad brain, there is shame in that? Why? I, I, don't, I don't think there, yeah. there should be. You know, one of the things shame. that really bothers me about this the most is the fact that the American Psychological Association, it has become such a political mm -hmm. lobby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting that around 1972 that they lobbied, not based upon scientific breakthrough, but simply through political maneuvering to say that homosexuality is no longer an emotional or psychological disorder and then they move on to the next thing, okay, and it's, it's gender identity. Did anyone notice that no sooner did they declassify those things as being mental illness, illnesses, that they started to develop new terms and circulate them in the court of public opinion? We had all of a sudden homophobia. Now we have transphobia. Something goes from being a disorder and then suddenly the next day, any opposition to it mm -hmm. is a psychological disorder. Make no mistake about it, these individuals are trying to say that your Christian worldview right. is a psychological disorder. This is war. And understand, it is a war of competing worldviews. And we need to understand that this whole thing is not about where the transgendered pee. It is about postmodernism and the question of whether things have essences. In fact, in other words, are they, are they objectively true or are they subjectively true? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, I have a white car. That's an objective claim about the object called my car. I can't change the color of my car by changing my opinion. White cars are cool. That's a subjective claim. I, as the subject, think that white cars are cool. Is sexual identity, how you are built as a creature, objective or subjective? Is it grounded in my opinion or is it grounded in the object called Jim? 
That's the question here. And the culture has forgotten the distinction between objective claims and subjective claims. Now everything is up for grabs. That's why the video, I just, this is Truth part of my preference. talk. This is part of my talk at Summit. By the way, young people need to go to Summit. You've said it twice. I'll say it a third time. <laughs> uh, because this is part of that talk. And here's why. That video is brilliant because he begins, am I a woman? And everyone is willing to say, well, yeah, if you think you are. Am I a Chinese woman? Another physical difference is race. Well, I would say, well, I'm not sure, do you have some Chinese descent? No, I'm just saying, I think I am. It's a little harder for them to buy. Am I a seven-year-old Chinese girl? They start to flinch. Why? Because they understand now they have to take everything that's objectively true about him and turn it into a subjective opinion. And they're not willing to do it. Am I a six-foot-five, seven-year-old Chinese woman? When they start to say, well, yeah, I get, yeah. really, that's where we've gotten? Because it's the slippery slope we started on. If you can see that your sexual gender is up to you, then so is my height. Hey, why can't I just say my dog and go to the bathroom right here on the stage? <laughs> you won't prosecute a dog for doing that. We'd hit you with a paper. There you go. <laughs> I so feel... Again, I don't get to decide the physical, objective nature of who I am by changing my opinion of who I am. But that's the logical slippery slope we're on right now, folks, because the yeah. same guy who does that on the stage could argue, well, wait a minute, he thinks he's a girl. Not that you think you're a girl. But the point is, <laughs> I got so a if he thinks that, why can't I think this? What's the difference? It's a physical difference. He's not that in, phys in reality, but I'm not this in reality, but we, it's all a matter of opinion. But notice the one aspect of this that people weren't willing to challenge is based on sex, see? Because the religion of sex has replaced any other worldview. And by the way, just so you know, the religion of sex is a religion of the sword, meaning they will burn you at the stake as a heretic yeah. if you don't fall in line. And the easiest way to counter this is to stand up for the truth. Yeah. If every Christian stood up for the truth, none of this would be happening. We're the problem. Yeah.